In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives does not unravel with death. We are confident that God always hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord today we gather to pray for the soul of Officer Alfred Hollis, who gave his life in service of the people of Quincy. Let us pray. Lord God, the death of Officer Hollis recalls our human condition and the brevity of our lives on earth. But for those who believe in your love, death is not the end, nor does it destroy the bonds that we share in this life. For we share the hope of your son's disciples as the children of God. Today we pray that the light of Christ's resurrection can be for us a source of hope and comfort as we pray for Officer Hollis and for all those who loved him through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, Father. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mark Kennedy. I'm currently the president of the Quincy Police Mutual Aid Association. And on behalf of the association, I'd like to thank all of you for coming here today and uh, spending this day with us. Uh, obviously, we'd hope for better weather, uh, but there's not a chance we're going to allow a little rain to put a damper on a memorial that's been 95 years in the making. Uh, we're here today, obviously, to dedicate a memorial to officer Alfred Hollis and to recognize his service to the city of Quincy and his ultimate sacrifice he made for the citizens of Quincy. We're also here today to celebrate the love and dedication of family. The love and support of his wife, his widow, who was left to raise three young girls alone. The love of those daughters whose father was taken way too soon, who made it a point to tell her children, about the sacrifice and service of, of their dad, 
um, and the, the, the love of these three little girls who passed on that legacy to their children and their grandchildren and kept uh, Alfred Hollis's memory alive. Uh, and we're also here today in large part to one of those grandchildren, Robert Miller, who made it his mission to, to make this day happen. And we're incredibly grateful and thankful to you, Mr. Miller, and we look forward to hearing from you in a, in a few minutes. Um, I'd now like to introduce the Chief of the Quincy Police Department, Paul Keenan, to bring the greetings of the department. Chief. Good morning and welcome all. We appreciate you coming uh, to help us uh, honor this man. It's long overdue. I'd like to thank our elected officials. We've got a couple of our elected officials, uh, state and local officials, as well as Mayor Tom Koch, for their continued support for the Quincy Police Department. I'd like to thank the Mutual Aid Association, the officers and members, the members and the officers of the Quincy Police Superior Officers, and the members and officers of the Quincy Police Patrol Officers Association for sponsoring this event today. On behalf of Officer, uh, on behalf of the Quincy Police Department, I'd like to welcome the Hollis family. Officer Hollis made the ultimate sacrifice protecting the citizens of Quincy in 1927. We gather here almost a century later to recognize the sacrifice that Officer Hollis made for the citizens of Quincy and the sacrifice that the Hollis family made for the citizens of Quincy. Officer Hollis left a wife and three, three young girls that had to raise themselves and find a way, and we're thankful for their sacrifice. I'd also like to thank uh, the officers of the Quincy Police Department for coming today to honor this man and this service is long overdue. I'd also like to point out, it was interesting when I read the story from uh, Mr. Miller about how he found the grave and how his daughter found the grave. We, every year we put Quincy Police flags on all of the graves for the fallen officers. And it was interesting that that's how they recognized the grave and finally found the grave that led us to this day. What also is interesting is we have a gentleman in the crowd, Jamie McAvoy. Jamie McAvoy is one of our civilian dispatchers who's been with the department over 40 years. Every year he makes it his mission to go around and put a flag at the grave site of every Quincy police officer that's passed away. So I'd like to thank Jamie, who's also here today. So on behalf of the Quincy Police Department, thank you for allowing us to do that, do this today for the family and for the citizens of Quincy. Also, it's kind of, a, it's kind of fitting because uh, Quincy, the Quincy Police uh, has not lost very many officers, thankfully. But when we do lose, lose an officer, it means an awful lot to all of our family. We're all family and friends. And to the officers today, I'd like to just point out that even back almost 100 years ago, a century ago, the police department, the policing in general, is very, very dangerous, dangerous profession. So be safe and God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, I'd now like to call on uh, the Honorable Mayor Thomas Cope to bring the greetings of the city. Thank you, Lieutenant Father Lou, Chief Keenan, descendants of the Hollis family, distinguished members of the department, our retirees, Councilor McCarthy, Representative Chan, thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, a little story before I give you a brief remark. Um, Councilor Dave McCarthy, who's a supporter of our public safety department's uh, grandfather, Frederick Collins, was the, in, the, the gentleman that followed up who's a PI on the side, went to the station and told the police who he thought it was, which led to this gentleman's arrest. So it's a small world when you really think about it. So thank you, Council McCarthy. Uh, you know, there's an old saying, um, if you're remembered, you're not dead. Obviously, we're in St. Mary's Church, and we all have the belief in uh, eternal life that the good Lord said, where I am going, I'm gonna create a place for each of you. And we believe that Officer Hollis is now sharing in his eternal life. So we have comfort in that. As mayor, I certainly wanna express my gratitude to the family. 
Um, and I, I pray each and every day for our men on the front line, men and women on the front line. Uh, it's, this is a reminder, as Chief Keenan said, that this job is dangerous, that the police department is that line between law and order and anarchy. And we saw the last couple of years what can happen when you step back from police enforcement in our cities. So I'm eternally grateful to the members of our department who have served over the years, who continue to serve, and put it on the line each and every day for the citizens of this great city. Again, my condolences to the family of Alfred Hollis. May God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, always been a uh, strong supporter of the police department, and when we approached him about doing this, he was all in, so thank you. Um, I'd like to call on Officer Hollis's grandson, Robert Miller, to uh, bring the remarks from the family. Start. Wow. Uh, first of all, on behalf of my family, myself, and Officer Hollis's other surviving grandchildren, <coughs> excuse me, my sister Marilyn Finley and my cousin Ron Eddy, I want to thank all of you for being here today, especially to all the officers here and to Chief Police Paul Keene and Mayor Thomas Cope. I would also like to offer help hat heartfelt thanks to those who helped to make this day in all its glory a reality. A special thanks to my first contact with the Quincy Police Department on this matter, Sergeant Karen Barkas. She was most helpful in getting the word out and getting the ball rolling. And also to Lieutenant Mark Kennedy, who took that ball and ran with it, along with the members of the Quincy Police Mutual Aid Association who approved the funding for this new headstone. You have been amazingly helpful and kind, and the result is this beautiful stone that truly honors our grandfather's memory and the ultimate sacrifice that he made 95 years ago. So it comes that we are gathered here today to honor and pay homage to police officer Alfred Nugent Hollis. On October 4, 1927, he was shot and killed in the line of duty by a master criminal while investigating a break-in with his partner, Officer Jack Fitzgerald, at what, was, at what was then Pill Brothers Hardware on Hancock Street in Quincy Square. Officer Fitzgerald was at the front of the building, and Officer Hollis went to the rear of the building in an attempt to box in the thief when shots rang out. As, we, as was reported in local newspapers, a witness who heard the exchange of gunfire and saw a man limping from the scene said that Officer Hollis's last words as he lay there on the ground dying on that rainy autumn day were, Jack, don't leave me. Officer Hollis was just 33 years old. He left behind a wife, Mary Daly, my grandmother, and three daughters, Dorothy, Geraldine, and Marjorie, who have all since passed on. He was the son of Bridget and Albert Hollis, a local newspaper reporter who was proclaimed to be the father of a twilight baseball by the first commissioner of baseball in around 1906. He was a brother to Massachusetts State Representative Herb Hollis of Braintree. Before becoming a police officer, he was a meat cutter at Swift Meat. My mother Geraldine was about four or five years old when her father died, so she didn't really remember or speak much about it. So the story of what happened on that tragic rainy autumn night is pieced together by family memories, newspaper articles kept in my grandmother's scrapbook, and other articles found by family members, such as my cousin Ron, 
who lives in Arizona and cannot be here with us today. He has been a meticulous family historian, emailing old pictures and newspaper clippings, some of which I have copies of here today. He still scours the internet looking for more details on our grandfather's murder and the trial that followed, and is always coming up with some interesting tidbits to share. As did my late brother Stephen. Prior to his death, he shared an avid, <coughs> excuse me, an avid interest in our family's history and made sure we all had copies of the book, The Long Blue Line that details the history of the Quincy Police Department and Officer Hollis's murder. Also, Quincy PD has, been, has shared copies of clippings and photos from their archives. Do appreciate that. I do have a few childhood memories of trying on my grandfather's cap hat and visiting the Daly family plot where my grandfather and great-grandparents were buried on special holidays with my grandmother and family. And as I was reflecting on some of that, when after 30 years of living in Florida and more years before that, I decided to visit my grandfather's uh, grave while on visit home last October. My memories had faded, so it was a bit of a trek going back and forth and back and forth through the cemetery and reading all the names and all the headstones, and it was a little frustrating. So it took two trips to Boston, and my daughter Miranda, her keen eye, to finally locate the grave. It was just as we were driving out of the cemetery, she noticed something, and she asked me to stop. She got out of the car, walked over, brushed some fallen leaves away, and discovered her grandfather's final resting place, which was marked with a simple footstone carved with his name and years of his birth and death. I was elated that we found, finally found uh, the grave and Miranda's little victory dance that she did that day. But I was also a little disappointed. You see, as, a child, as childhood memories go, I thought his grave would be more elaborate and fitting for a man who had made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. I thought his life would be marked with more than a footnote, so to speak. It nagged at me, and so when I got home to Florida, and after speaking with family members, decided to do something about it and get a proper stone. With help from Rose at A. Monte Granite and Dave Pickenen from St. Mary's here, who provided records on who purchased and owned the plot, because we didn't know really and what kind of headstone could be placed there after all these years. So thank you to Dave. Then I made a phone call to the Quincy Police Department asking for their help. Good and helpful people answered that call so we could gather here today to honor Officer Alfred Nugent Hollis with a final salute and a final tribute that serves to answer his last words. Jack, don't leave me. Officer Hollis, we have not left you. Officer Hollis, we will never forget you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, you know, I, I started this morning talking about family and the importance of family and what your family has endured um, for the citizens of Quincy. And I just want you all to know, as I, I spoke with Mr. Miller uh, before, your Quincy Police Department family has never forgotten the sacrifice um, that your, your grandfather and, and um, Officer Hollis made every year. The first Sunday in June is the uh, police memorial, and every year we read out the names of uh, the officers who've passed away in the, during the past five years. And every year we speak your grandfather's name, 
uh, and the other officers who, who died in service to the citizens of Quincy. So I want you to know that your police family has never forgot the sacrifice, and today we're just memorializing it for the citizens of Quincy who walk through the cemetery and people who visit, and we're recognizing for eternity the dedication and the sacrifice that, that Officer Hollis and your family made. So um, on behalf of the Mutual Aid Association, welcome to the police family. It's nice to finally meet you all. And I'd like to thank a lot of our, our retirees who are here today. There are a number of them. You don't recognize them. They look a lot happier. Um, they're in plain clothes, but they've never forgotten either, and they, uh, they're in this church. So um, with that, before Father Lou is going to say a final prayer, we're going to march out, and um, we're going to be led by, uh, by the uh, Sergeant Cheever from the Boston Police Gala Column. He's going to march us down to unveil the stone, members of the the Hollis family are going to reveal the, the stone. Um, Father Lou will do a blessing down there for us, and then we'll retire. We invite you all back to 16C on Cottage Ave for, uh, for a luncheon. So um, with that, Father Lou. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, and our district attorney, Michael Morrissey, is a big supporter as well. I haven't seen him here, but he is uh, in the crowd here, in the back. On the, you can't miss him, yellow raincoat. So thank you. Thanks, Chief. And my friends, before our closing prayer, I think all of us have to express our thanks to all the officers who serve in this city. I speak for all the people of Quincy who truly know their dedication and service. We're so grateful to each of you. We know that you have an impossible job each day, and I know that each of you serve this city with grace and with dignity, and we are so grateful for you, and please, God will protect each of you every day to always bring you home safely to your families. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, by the mystery of the cross, you have made us strong, by the sacrament of the resurrection, you have sealed us as your own. Look kindly upon the soul of Officer Alfred Hollis. He is now freed from the mortality of this life. May he be counted each day in the company of the angels and saints. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, we gather today to pray for our brother, Officer Alfred Hollis, whose body lies here. Today we gather to rededicate and bless this headstone as a constant reminder of his ultimate sacrifice for the good of the people of Quincy. 
we pray that he truly is now with the Lord, with the angels and saints in heaven. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant, Officer Hollis, has now gone to his rest in Christ and will share always in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Hi, Mark Kennedy. Uh, we're here at the Alfred Hollis Memorial. Uh, it was contacted several months ago. The police department was contacted by Officer Hollis's uh, grandson. Um, and he had come up to the cemetery to show his granddaughter where his, uh, his grandfather was, was buried after dying in the line of duty in 1927. And he was sort of dismayed that at the time of his death, um, it was just marked with a simple footstone and didn't think that that was deserving of somebody who uh, died in the line of duty. So he reached out to us and we agreed. So with the Quincy Police Mutual Aid Association, the Superior Officers Union, uh, the Patrol Officers Union, and the support of Chief Keenan and the Mayor's Office, uh, we worked with Father Lou and St. Mary's Cemetery to dedicate a new proper memorial uh, for Officer Hollis, recognizing his sacrifice and that of his family. <laughs> 